So today I, I, I talk about a, a, a topic we call the unoccurring disease. <laughs> so it's maybe how to quantify the unoccurring disease. Um, the background, you know, um, for many diseases, oh, is that, it's clear, right? I think it's, a, okay. It's a little bit dark, but uh, yeah, uh, it's a background, you know, for many, um, diseases, once occur, usually it's very difficult to be cured. So that's why we want to early diagnosis. <laughs> okay. And for this uh, topic, you know, we have, uh, we can trace back to the 2000 years ago. <laughs> we have a very good book. <laughs> we call the Yellow Emperor Medicine, you know, uh, 200, more 200 BC. <laughs> so it's a, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, this is a, so that is the best doctor treats the unoccurred disease. The better doctor treats the occurring disease. The inferior doctor treats the occurred disease. <laughs> so based on this standard, you know, uh, our modern uh, medical doctor is considered as a very low level <laughs> for the occurring disease. <laughs> so it's a joke. But anyway, and, and even, you know, 2,000 years ago, we have such a good concept, but uh, it's a qualitative concept uh, based on the, you know, our, uh, you know, uh, the standard of the science we have to quantify. Otherwise, we cannot apply to the practical, you know, clinical applications. So um, next one, we are going to talk a theory, new theory, how to quantify the on occurred disease. Uh, this is a, a concept, you know, um, consider uh, an organism or a species like the human. Uh, we usually in the normal state, uh, right now. So for instance, for me, right now it's a 36 degree <laughs> temperature, right? But with the internal and the external, you know, pressure, um, where our body, where our system is slowly changed, you know. And, you know, internal pressure is a, uh, say mutations, we have a mutation, you know, um, and external like the, um, your food or environment, you know, pressure. Uh, but the, with the accumulation of the, you know, gradual change at a certain point, you have drastic change then lead to the, we call the disease state. Um, and, you know, uh, disease state uh, and the normal state, uh, they are very big difference. That's why we can find so many biomarkers, like the proteins or genes, to distinguish these two states, make a correct diagnosis. So it's, uh, it's possible, you know, um, based on the um, current modern medical, you know, technologies. Uh, but the problem is that, you know, if we, this, is pro this process clearly is nonlinear, you know. Um, if we consider as a nonlinear dynamics of the, this process. This is not important at this point. This point is also not important. Uh, the Im important point actually is here. We call the tipping point. We, all, we call the unoccurred disease. <laughs> it's still, you know, it's very important. Why? Because at the same environment and the same condition, they are going to be quick change to the irreversible disease state. So it is still reversible. So that is, uh, that's why it's important. So, uh, but the, the, the problem is, uh, you know, um, the critical state is similar as the normal state. There's no big, no difference, you know. It's, uh, we can consider it's one part of the normal state. That's why our current medical biomarker cannot identify critical state, because it's still one part of the normal state. Um, so we need a, um, a completely different theoretical method and, um, to quantify this state. So I'm going to talk this. Uh, uh, before you know, uh, we talk the theoretical part, um, we need to consider a few conditions. Uh, to apply to the biology and the medicine. The challenge is, uh, 
um, a good um, big data method, we need to consider uh, this point. You know, the one is that we only have a small number of samples because you know those people are normal people. You cannot expect those people to come to the hospital for medical check every day. So you only have a few number of samples for each individual. So uh, for instance, we need uh, five, less five samples to make a decision if or not these people is in the critical state or tipping point. Uh, but we require a large number of observations, uh, like the omics data, like the sequence data. You know, for one sample, we need a large number of observations, so which can compensate the lack of the sample. Okay. Uh, another factor we need to consider a strong noise. You know, in the data. You know, like the not like the engineering data, like the you know, uh, biological data is so noisy, and uh, they usually, uh, you know, uh, they have uh, so big, uh, you know, fluctuations. So uh, we need to consider all those three factors to make a good uh, method. Okay. Uh, so next one, I will show you. Uh, actually, for one person, if you give me three at least three samples. And uh, we can tell you if or not this person is in the critical state. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure I should talk more about the mathematics, but anyway, uh, I only tell you the basic concept, how we can quantify the tipping point. Uh, you know, um, the model is, uh, uh, it's a model model. <laughs> we consider a biological system is a nonlinear dynamic system. You know, it's uh, controlled by the Differential equations. So we have a, um, so we have a, you know, variable. Z, Z is a, a hold the observable variable, like the gene expression, which means uh, 20 thousand variables for genes. If we consider protein, maybe another 30 thousand. So uh, any observable, the, the data is a variable, is Z. Any unknown uh, parameter is uh, considered as a P. No, like the you know mutation, we don't know some uh, external pressure, you know the the the, the PM two point five somehow you know is is unknown for us, so it's a P. So uh, for such a system, uh, as mentioned, we assume an organism is from normal state, pre-disease, critical state, and disease state. You know, um, so far. The, uh, you know, so far the tried, um, our current uh, uh, medical science or, or biological science mainly we consider case and control. So disease state is a case, normal is control. We want to compare, quantify these two states, then understand the molecular mechanism for the disease or biological process. Right? So traditionally, uh, it's going to do this way. But then uh, here, as mentioned, uh, we are not interested in this part, this part, but we are interested only in the, we call the critical state. At this state, mathematically, you only can push the normal state to their limit, we call the critical state. At the critical state, we found a very interesting features. The feature is that regardless of the, you know, complicates, uh, how complicated of the original biologic system, at a critical state, hold the dynamics we can prove is constrained to the only one dimensional space. So that is a, is a generic um, features, which means regardless of the young people, or old people, or lung cancer, or influenza, as far as they came to the critical state, they follow the same the rule. They are constrained to one, we call them center manifold, one dimensional space, okay. Uh, so uh, then we just focus on this one dimensional space to do the statistical analysis so we can quantify the critical state, we call the tipping point. So that is, a, 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 then I use the one dimensional uh, system to show this concept. As mentioned, you know, the normal state, critical state, and the disease state, this is the disease progression. 
uh, in a normal state, you know, this is a suppose they are the potential function. <laughs> you don't need a, uh, you don't need to have this one. Suppose we have, you know, this is a normal state. This temperature is the 33, 36 degree, right? So uh, this is the disease state is a 39 degree. You know, it's a, so different. Uh, in a disease state, you know, 39 degree is a so different, you know, between the 36. So, so that's why we can diagnose the disease. But in a critical state, you are found, you know, in terms of the temperature is similar, you know, on average is similar, but it's really different. So difference is a critical state, they can amplify the fluctuations, okay? But in a normal and a disease state, they cannot amplify. They are very stable. You know, even you drink hot water, your temperature to the 38 degree, but after 10 or 20 minutes, you will return to normal quickly because it's stable. But in the disease state, it's also stable. If you drink, a, you have a drug, you can, draw, you can draw your temperature to the 36 degree, but they will quickly return to 39 again because it's stable. But the critical state is different. They can amplify the fluctuations. Um, for the, unfortunately, for the biological system, it's a, it's a high dimensional system. So we have a N dimension. <laughs> so it's not so simple. So we have a the theory. Uh, I'm not talking about the, how we theoretically derive this theory, but they, we can prove based, just based on the data. As far as these three conditions are satisfied at the same time, the system is a critical state. Okay. Uh, then I use these slides to show what's the these three key conditions. Uh, as mentioned, that the normal, the di critical state, and the disease state. This is disease progression. Uh, at a normal state, you know, if we can measure five samples for one person, for five, yeah, like the gene expressions, then we can measure the correlation between any pair of the genes. So that's very easy. As far as you have a omics data, like the gene expression data, so you can get the correlation, we always call the co-expression network. So it's very easy. But you will find at the critical state, this network has very stringent structure, even is similar as the normal state. The one, one thing is you will find a number of the genes, their correlation drastically increased. The borderline is the correlation, strong correlation. You will find a few number of genes, the correlation drastically increased. So this is the condition one. Uh, condition two is uh, you will find this number of the gene, they lost the correlation with the whole remaining 20,000 gene. You know, they lost the correlation with uh, all of them. Even in a normal state, they collaborated with other gene to facilitate certain biological function in your pathway. But in the critical state, they lost the correlation with all remaining 20,000 genes. So this is the condition two. Uh, condition three is uh, uh, this number of the gene you will find is very unstable. They fluctuated. This time is high. The next time you measure is low. It's strongly fluctuated. So this is the condition three. If these three conditions are satisfied at the same time, which means this sample is in the critical state. So further progression, they will quickly move to the disease state. They will change it drastically. So that is the whole theoretical uh, uh, the, the, the work. So this number of the, uh, the gene or proteins we call the dynamic network biomarkers, or we call the DMB, they actually have very um, significant biomedical implications, uh, which means uh, they can they move first. They first break the limit to try to hold the system to so one normal state to the disease state. So, uh, if we can treat this number of the genes, theoretically, they cannot come to the disease state. Okay. Uh, I'm not talking about more about the uh, theoretical stuff. Then, uh, next one, um, we are going to uh, 
apply this theory to a few number of uh, you know um, experiment data. Uh, the, the first one is a lung injury. Uh, for this case, um, for this case, we have a, a, a nine samples, a sampling time point. You know, the first zero time point, half hour, one hour, seventy-two hour. So uh, this is uh, for the mass. You know, all the mass are exposure to this uh, poison gas. Okay. So this gas released actually by the car. Um, and at each time point, I measure five samples and with the 20,000 RNA gene expressions. So uh, then this is, a, uh, this is the result. You know, this is a half hour, one hour, four hour, eight hour, until 72 hour. So this is gene expressions. So based, uh, just based on the, uh, our DNB theory, uh, we can identify the dynamic network biomarker here. We intentionally put it here. Then we can see at eight hour, they are very strong signal. So we, we know it's in the tipping point. Okay, so it's a, we call it a pre-disease state. So, but uh, at this time point, um, clinically, the lung is still normal. It's still normal. So, but the next time point, uh, we found the lung, you know, um, they are damaged, you know, lung is damaged. So we, we can say that we correctly, critically identify their critical state. So this case is uh, for the uh, liver cancer. So liver cancer, so the human. Uh, they are, you know, liver cancer, uh, they can clinically, they can divide it into six stages. So, you know, first early stage, then very advanced stage. So each stage, we take 10 people, 10 persons, different person. Actually, we want to measure the same person for 10, 10 times, but uh, certainly we cannot do that <laughs> because it's the tissue. So we approximately consider this 10 person as the one person measured 10 times. So it's a kind of approximation because we cannot have so many samples. <laughs> anyway, each stage, we take a 10, 10 person then uh, make the gene expression data. Then uh, use the DMB theory, you know, we found the DMB here. Then we found at the third stage, they have a very thick, strong signal. So we know in the tipping point is here. So then we check the, then we check the next stage for these 10 persons, patients. We found all these 10 patients, they get the metastasis. Okay, which means, uh, which means uh, even all these people, these patients, uh, are liver cancer. It's slow, the disease, liver cancer slowly changed. But uh, the metastasis is a major phase change, phase transition. So we detected the pre-metastasis state. Okay. So this is a, a DMP, this is the number of them. Uh, say uh, that the genes, about 30 genes, they are DMB, dynamic network biomarker. So uh, then we found that these genes, very interesting, you know, we found that they are strongly related, this group of genes strongly related to the cancer. You know, nine of them are actually, it's a cancer disease genes, five liver cancer disease genes. So it's strongly related to the cancer, also metastasis, okay. Uh, so this is uh, for the uh, uh, live experiments for the human. Uh, so 17 people, 17, you know, uh, S1, S5, S17, you know. This 17 people, they are all uh, affected, uh, affected by H H3N2 Wisconsin virus at the same time point. Then uh, every five or six hours take blood. So uh, take blood samples. Then for each person, we until take it to the 108 hour. So to one person, we take 17 samples, okay. Uh, then make the gene expressions. So measure the, about 10,000 genes. Uh, so uh, this, the, this color, you know, 
this yellow color uh, means the clinical diagnosis. You know, uh, for, for this case, you know, we have S1, S5, S6, S7. These four person, they get the disease symptom, uh, influenza, get the inf influenza symptom at 45 hours. So this is the clinical diagnosis. And, and these two person say they, they have the symptom at 101 hour. So this, uh, they don't have the symptom, even they have the virus. Okay, so that is uh, uh, the data. And, and for the, this 17 per person, is a male and a female, half half, you know, it's half half. So the, the age is 20 to 40. So it's, uh, they are all very young. So it's uh, still reversible, <laughs> even get the disease. Okay, so use the DMD, you know, you just uh, use the measure the data. Then you can uh, quantify the first nine people in a person, you have very sig significant signal at the 29 hour. You know, we know they are going to be influenza very soon. The remaining eight, they don't have any signal. So this is a diagnosis by our best doctor. <laughs> okay, so the red one is the diagnosis by the DMB. They are all earlier than the, you know, the, the clinical diagnosis. <laughs> So, uh, the last example is uh, for the diabetes. So this is for the mice. You know, we have a mice is an um, experiment conducted at, uh, you know, is a four week, eight week, is until 20, 20 weeks. Okay, so diabetes uh, mice is GK, GK mice, and uh, we also have uh, the control is Vista. So each stage we take five mice, five measured liver and uh, muscle, and, uh, Adipose, uh, about the 10,000 genes, high dimensional data. Okay. Uh, then uh, during this process, they have very, very big, two big events. The one is uh, the insulin resistance at eight week, stage two. Uh, the other one is uh, uh, beta cell failure, is uh, stage five. So they are big events during this process. So. And then based on our uh, dynamic network biomarker, I mean, DMB theory, we found, we actually found two critical state, I mean, tipping point. The one is the first, the second is the fourth. So they are actually uh, correspond to the, you know, these two events, insulin resistance and the beta cell failure. So this is the diabetes progress, progression, you know, and they are actually two critical state, you know, two phase change, okay. Uh, we also check a little bit, uh, for this case, I also check a little bit the uh, details, you know. Um, uh, for the DMB, you know, we have uh, 45 genes for the for DMB uh, at the tipping point. And if you consider traditional differential expressed gene, you know, traditionally we consider normal and diabetes. The differential genes about 2,800. It's a, uh, usually it's, a, you know, it's about two or 3,000 genes. They have the change. They change their expressions because of this diabetes. Okay, but we found the overlap is very small. You know, overlap only three is very small. But if we check the pathway, they have a very strong, you know, overlap at the pathway level, not at the genes. So uh, now we check that it's a very important pathway in the diabetes, you know. Um, the pink, pink color is a DMB, so our DMB, you know. It's almost in the upstream of the, in the, in the pathway. Then the traditional differential gene, you know, the red one and the blue one, they mainly in the, located in the downstream. Somehow it's like the DMB started this process, started the disease. Then actually the biological function is a complete, I mean, conducted, is facilitated by the traditional differential genes because they change the different uh, expressions. Okay. Uh, okay. And then, uh, you know, before, I think I still have a, a few minutes before I, I, I I stopped. Um, 
I gave a, also I want to give a some uh, comment for this uh, new theory. You know, for the tipping point or critical state, uh, there are so much such study in other area like the you know like the fish stock you know the some environmental change even in Japan like the earthquake earthquake is kind of the critical state you know to plate the uh, you know uh, the energy accumulated at a certain point at a critical point they break down is earthquake right so it's a uh, even for the you know stock market is somehow like the critical state. Uh, so traditionally, um, there are so, so many such studies, like the, as I mentioned, you know, finance, uh, finan financial area, you know, is uh, like the stock market. They are heuristically, they, they consider as far as they have herding behavior. Herding behavior means uh, you sell the stock today, then they sell to stock, all the people sell the stock uh, yesterday, then buy stock today, you know, the fl strong fluctuation. As far as such a, there is a hurting behavior, they consider is a critical state, I mean, tipping point of the stock market. For the uh, network science, we have uh, another heuristic, you know, criteria, we call the connectivity avalanche. You know, this, uh, this is a, uh, you know, uh, social communication, uh, like the Facebook, you know, they have a, uh, a social commu uh, the community, you know, you, if you use, if some, uh, this is the internet, right? Uh, if some key, sensitive keywords at a certain community drastically increased at a certain time point, which means in a critical state, <laughs> something going happen next, maybe yes, tomorrow. <laughs> so that is, uh, uh, is uh, also one criteria. For the physical science, uh, we have a critical slowing down. So uh, all this career, uh, this uh, criteria is a heuristic, but uh, they don't have a uh, theoretical the, the, the basis. But uh, uh, you can say they only catch the one part of the critical state. So um, so our dynamic, the only one part of our DMB theory. So only um, catch the one you know phenomena. Actually, as mentioned. Tipping point, they have three conditions. You have to have satisfy three conditions then make them to the quantified critical state. So, uh, so right now, you know, uh, many people also use my, our theory to use the, in the stock market and also, you know, engineering area, okay. So this is the one uh, applied, the, uh, the people use the, our DMB to, uh, Detect correctly detect the environmental change for the lake. This very famous lake, um, they they have a nutrition rich new rich nutrition at 2002, and they based on the measurement they correctly uh, successfully detect the early signal <laughs> just before the, the you know the, the catastrophic environmental change. Okay, so this is a. Uh, uh, stock market, you know, 2008, September 15th, it's a Lehman Brothers, you know, bank, uh, Lehman Shock. Uh, they used the uh, interbank cash flow, they used the DMB, then, you know, just before the, you know, uh, New York market crackdown, uh, I mean, uh, crash, they, they found a very significant signal. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so this one is a, uh, and uh, used for the, um, this disease, used the DMV. Uh, just the last year, another two groups, you know, uh, because my work is, uh, my group mainly work on the theoretical part. We don't do experiment. So uh, fortunately, another two groups <laughs> conducted the experiment. This is the molecule, at the molecular level. The one is, uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, December in the plus biology. Uh, this one is uh, in the, in the conducted by the group in the United States. And this is also December last year. So they studied the cell fit decision, you know, cell differentiated from stem cell to the somatic cell. So before they um, change their phase, they also, there's a tipping point, you know, because slowly 
differentiate, it is slowly change, then drastically differentiate to other, right? So you use the DMB, you know, they, these three conditions, the first two, three, eventually they, they have very good, showed a very good signal to detect the tipping point, also critical uh, uh, driver genes. Uh, so this one is, uh, uh, this year in the Nature Review, they, they gave a very long article to review uh, our DMB theory. So, you know, they used the DMB here. So they also apply to the, uh, you know, somehow it's a drug responder and non-responder successfully. Okay. Okay. Uh, this one, I, I just, uh, <laughs> last, uh, last month I have a defense for, I just uh, apply a funding. So I use this slides to show the, to show the funding agent. <laughs> you know, this slide shows AACR, it's an American Association for the Cancer Research. They, they hold an annual meeting uh, in Washington, D.C. last month. And um, so the, you know, this is a report for this the meeting, this very big meeting. You know, the title is Hunt for Cancer Tipping Fund. <laughs> oh, sorry. So it's, uh, you know, last year when I talked about this issue, um, in a, um, at the biological a medical conference, some people ask me if or not this work is related to the to the fortune teller. You know, fortune teller, uh, Wulangai. <laughs> so anyway, so last year some people they still consider you know uh, detect the tipping point is kind of the fortune teller. This so this year you know uh, in the AACR uh, the they call the tipping point is the next big science problem. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so uh, maybe I, uh, it's time I need to close the, my talk. And here I gave a new concept. Is uh, we call them uh, DM, um, critical. We call the pre-disease state. It's still reversible. So you, the keys are still reversible. And also we gave a, a theoretical work. We call it a dynamic network bio biomarker theory to detect, and quantify the tipping point, and is a is a model free, so we don't have any model. Is a even we don't have certainly we don't have a parameter. As far as there is, they are measured omics data, we can detect. And so uh, it can also apply to other biological process. It's not necessary for the disease. You know, so many so many. Process is nonlinear, you know, slowly change, then drastically change. So uh, they can also apply to this area. I think I can stop here. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>